Welcome to Sunny Morning. It's 11.45 here at El Dorado Royal Resort. And we're broadcasting. So, Elliot, keep telling us about what you have in there mm, okay. for us. Well, I mean, there's so much to talk about with travel. I mean, but today's other topic I wanted to touch on with you. I mean, I know because you've been there is Cuba and Cuba is having a renaissance and, you know, they have an annual travel fair. It's called Fit Cuba. It takes place in May and every year they invite travel delegates, travel operators. It's their biggest travel event of the year. And, you know, they nearly missed it because of Hurricane Irma. Do you remember? I mean, yes. late in last year, November, the last one, right? it ravaged through the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. It hit so many travel tourism islands. But, you know, Cuba's Minister for Tourism proudly declared in December that this event was going ahead. And, you know, What's really impressing me at the moment is their appetite for European travelers. And, you know, Cuba is a place, if you haven't been to, that is amazing. I mean, only until recently, 2016, you know, Cuba reopened its doors to Americans after 50 years that Americans yes. couldn't travel. So they, you know, they received their first commercial flight with JetBlue, the carrier that took Americans over. And that was thanks to President Obama, who had renewed ties you know he famously had the meeting with with cuba's officials to enable americans to travel again and that's still that door's still open and americans are loving going to cuba but you see they're not the key market i mean they will become more and more important but the french are very very now important to cuba so you know they're doing a lot of promotion towards france they were recently in paris actually with their delegation at the uh, the international trade fair in paris so it was really well, interesting you know all cuba it's always been very visited regardless of all mm. the circumstances with fidel castro and you know locking everybody in and oh, yeah. some and americans you know they couldn't actually get get into the country for many years 50 years actually yes right and and however what what is your pronostic your prediction about cuba in travel because this is going to turn really interesting after everything, you know, that the wall went down, another wall, then it's yeah. down, right? Which is amazing. Well, it's, it's really amazing. excellent for Cubans as well. It, it's a great country to visit. You know, yes, of course, the echoes of the past are there. You know, it's, it's communist, you know, it's still obviously a militaristic regime. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get to Cuba, of course, and you see Havana, it's almost like time stood still somewhere in 1962. Literally. I've been there. Absolutely. I've been in Havana, and they, literally. It's just like the time is just held forever. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's Cuba's always on the radar. You know, there's hit me. There's the music industry from Cuba is really important, but not just you know Havana, Unana. That song at the moment's got us all Ooh. dancing here at the resort. But it's the medical <laughs> industry, and they're pushing, you know, really and hard on. And sports. And sports, absolutely. Sports. They are excellent as well. And, you know, of course, we also have a medical expert with us today to talk to, and hopefully can touch on the subject of medical tourism in Cuba is driving the European market as well. Um, they're, they're definitely looking for the French tourism. Mm -hmm. So definitely more culture, medically oriented tourism. Those were the new promotions and incentives that they were talking about in Paris and that they'll be doing a lot more in May at Fit Cuba. But I'm really excited for Cuba. I mean, they've had some really tough years economically because of the hurricanes, but they're really coming back. And, you know, Mexico is also, you know, flexing its muscles because, you yes. know, that's potentially competition for places like definitely. Cancun and Playa del Carmen. Um, we already have here, of course, medical tourism in spades. People come here a lot for dental work. They come here for um, bariatric surgeries. But in, 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 uh, regarding infrastructure mm -hmm. for tourism, mm -hmm. Mexico beats even Germany. I can't tell you yeah. that much. I've been in many countries and I've been in Cuba as well. And I can totally, completely tell you that Mexico beats, I mean, many of the countries. And I know that many of, the, many of you that are listening to this are agree. Uh, you know, I've been several times like in uh, yeah. Germany or Italy, mm -hmm. Spain, uh, uh, Cuba, for, for, of course, many times in the United States. And uh, United States, actually, I love the service as well. They are really, yeah. really, really well prepared. And, um, but no, definitely, I mean, uh, as far as the color of the water and the beach, I mean, it's yes, it's like a competition <laughs> but with uh, Cancun, for instance, or La Riviera Maya, La Riviera Maya. But um, it's not in uh, infrastructure for tourism. It's very, very hard to beat Mexico. Well, it is. You know, there's <laughs> Cuba, of course, is, if you look at the number of hotels in Cuba, I mean, yes. where this is, um, this, this conference is taking place in May in, um, in the key Santa Clara, 
which is, is, is historic. That's where the, the American flight came in two years ago. But also in that key, it's kind of like the Florida Keys there. They're building six new hotels at the moment. So suddenly this new injection of capital and, like you say, infrastructure is going to be receiving thousands and thousands of more international travelers. So yes, definitely. you're going to be reading a lot more about Cuba or hearing more about Cuba in terms of its very sophisticated tourism offer. And um, the people, I mean, describe, I mean, your experience with the people, what was it like? Well, with the people, it was very nice. And um, as far as food, it's very different. Uh, we need to get used to, but it's, it's good. I mean, and, but what, it, what I really like the most is that the whole city is like a, like a museum. It's very interesting. Mm. It's like an art mm -hmm. and uh, like a painting, <laughs> like yeah. you described it earlier. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's held in, in, in the time. And I really like that. And um, so, and, uh, well, everything is different. And the music, you know, and they're mm -hmm. very happy and they have really wonderful yeah. shows as well. So the experience was amazing. I mean, to me, we're only 90 miles. I and mean, we're sitting here today, we're only 90 miles from Cuba. It takes on a charter flight, just over an hour to get there, you know. And the experience, of course, is Caribbean, that beautiful, clear water. But it's a slightly different reception. And, you know, we talked about passports coming in and out oh. of countries. <laughs> did you have any passport oh, issues yes, leaving Cuba? I did. I did. <laughs> but it's not because I didn't have my right passport because I am Mexican. <laughs> but they thought I was Cuban. And oh. I had, oh, I had a really horrible time on the way out because they didn't want, they didn't want to let me out. <laughs> really? They thought you were they, an exile, a Cuban yes, exile. I was, a no. Looking they for even, refuge. They even threatened me that, you know, like, well, do you know that this is going to be perpetuity in jail for you if you are lying? And it's like, oh my gosh. And I was looking at me like, are you guys talking to me? Like, I'm Mexican. Look, it's my passport. My Mexican passport. And they so I was there for a documents. while. I was oh, there dear. for a while asking me question after question after question until actually I, I think I got mad a little bit and yeah. And then I said, you know what, you, you get me out or I talk to the, or I'm going to call the Mexican consulate right away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it had to go that, that far. <laughs> so this is one of the things I think, you know, Cuba may need to improve on. I mean, we're talking fondly about Cuba, but we're also talking about the reality as well. I mean, you know, they have to treat people fairly equ equally, equally and tourists, you know. <laughs> as we said in our first section, you know, having the passport of, you know, that piece of gold, depending on where you're from, could be an advantage or a disadvantage for you, right? According exactly. to where you go. So maybe Cuba needs to, I hope you're watching this morning and um, <laughs> you know, we can get that a little bit right. But they have really wonderful things like, like Pinar del Rio. It's a mm. beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, they have these mountains in there and they, they have some factories, you know, they, they uh, show you how they make the cigars and how they prepare everything. And so it's very interesting. Yeah, so it's about very that. interesting. You know, if you go on like a very like old that. machines, you know, like it's really and old. All that hand really crafting, old. right? I mean, it's yes. like you see them being rolled and the people there working on the on the products there. I, I felt like in the times of the, yeah. the the train, the old trains. How do you call them? Ferrocarril. Oh, like the steam train? Yeah, the steam train. Mm -hmm. Like those, mm -hmm. those kind they of still machines. Use them? Oh, it no, was no, almost no. back in that era. Like, like uh, it made era. me feel like I was yeah. like in that era. That was what, 1900s? Absolutely. Wow, you know, early, when, when early 2000 now. <laughs> so it's, it really is a step back in <laughs> like time, right? 100, 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think they're going to get more sophisticated. I definitely think it's well worth a look. And there's so many, I think what we're trying to say today is research a little bit what you want to do in Cuba because they're pushing and incentivizing scuba diving, of course, the food, you know, the gastronomical area, the medical tourism side of things. So I think, you know, it's fair across the board that they are really looking to compete now as a world order for not just a sun and beach vacation. You know, there's a lot more potentially to discover there. So anything else before we go to break? I mean, anything else that you would really encourage people to look for in Cuba? Well, of course, I mean, uh, Baradero, it's a oh, very beautiful oh, place. Yeah. Beautiful beach. And there. I would recommend like to take a tour because mm. Cuba is not that big. So it's uh, like if you have one or a week and a half of vacation in there, that's plenty to visit like la, la, the main places, like Havana, Pinar del Rio, which Pinar yeah. del Rio, you can do that like in one day, it's like a one day tour. Okay. And uh, definitely Varadero because yeah, that's one where the nice shows are as well. Yeah, they have them yeah. in La Habana as well, but it's, I, I, would, I like them more in Varadero. Yeah, and that's a, a real and hot spot for British tourists flock there as well, don't they? They've always been there. <laughs> the British um, travel contingent, are they guests of honor at this Fit Cuba show as well? They're still, Britons are still regarded as number one for travel tourism, and then the Germans, oh, wow. 
And now uh -huh. it's the French, so you know, French, you better start getting used to spending a bit more money in Cuba. You know, they accept euros there, so uh, <laughs> so you might be leaving France. You know, France is a great place. Don't mean to offend you, but. You can't beat the Caribbean, guys. I know you're cold right now. Well, you ought to come over. Visit Cuba, visit <laughs> Mexico, visit El Dorado Royal, and we're coming back. Stay with us.